What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel again and today we are building off our video from yesterday. Yesterday's video was how to have an effective offensive line in Madden 20 and that in my opinion is the most important offensive position to get locked down and have a good unit that you can trust because that is going to influence how you play um, across the board on uh, on offense. It's going to affect your run game, it's going to affect your pass game, it's going to affect everything, so your, your offensive line is the most important position. But today I want to talk about what I consider to be probably the most important position in uh, or on your defensive side of the ball, and that's going to be your corners. And you guys might not totally agree um, with what I'm going to say in terms of corners, but I'm going to show you guys how to have effective corners that will do their job for the most part um, without having to have the highest overall players. And you're going to see plays made by your lower overall players. And you can honestly go with a budget squad in the secondary. And I have always done this until this year where I actually have two solid corners on both ends and then a good third corner uh, to top it off. But the important things to know with your corners is the role that you want them to play. And a lot of people overlook some of the roles that corners play. A lot of people are looking for purely pass coverage type of players, and that that's not the wrong idea. That That is kind of the right idea, but a lot of people are going to overlook the fact that these guys are going to make or break your run game. And what I mean by that is a lot of times in Madden, you know, players are going to try and run to the outside because if you're playing a user, for example, or even if you're playing an AI, but if you try and stack the box, the opponent is going to try and run outside of that. Very often in Madden, you're going to see outside runs and they're going to get broken for huge yardage. And the reason being is that your corners are just going to get flat out blocked and never get off of the block and make a play. Well, one of the things that I want you guys to realize is that corners are important in the run game, even more so probably in Madden than the linebackers or the safeties are. Now, don't get me wrong, these guys are all very important in the run game and they serve their own roles, but corners kind of, from my experience, can make or break whether the opponent's getting 20 or 30 yards on a run or whether they get 3 or 4 yards on an outside run or maybe even negative yardage. And the reason being for that is a lot of corners are very weak and they're very weak in the run game. They don't have good block shed or anything like that. But if you want to have a budget squad that is going to effectively help your team in all areas, you're going to want to look for corners that have those types of abilities. And so the stats that go into that, that, that affect whether they're going to be able to shed blocks or not, is obviously going to be like their their block shedding stat down there, their strength, their hit power and stuff like that, on, on whether they can tackle. And so those stats matter a bit. And the thing that you have to understand with that though is that you don't need them to be crazy high as you can see with desmond king he has like 60 overall block shed and then my, even my best corner only has 55 block shed and is a little bit weaker so what i've started to do in mountain 20 is look for strong corners that can go up against wide receivers and get off blocks but i want to show you the stats for wide receivers in the blocking game. If you go and look at a guy like Keenan Allen, you're gonna, ha you know, even top end receivers, what you're gonna have to compete with are stats like these. And what it is, is it's a mathematical formula as it has been in the past. It's gonna be, what is your block shedding versus what is the blocking rating for the guy that you're going up against? And so the run blocking rate or for, rating for a lot of receivers, even the top receivers, is gonna be right here around that 59 to 60 threshold and that's really important that's really really important if you want your corners to make or break your run game you need to be above at or above that threshold to give them a chance of actually getting off and helping you out in that aspect of the game and so i know that this is kind of a uh an unusual way to look at it but it's something that i've found to be necessary in that we'll get to coverage in a minute um but a lot of the coverage stuff speaks for itself whereas the, the run blocking stuff isn't as obvious in the run defense stuff. So if I have my corners going up against 59, over, 59 run blocking from uh, Keenan Allen, that means that if I go back to my corners here, Casey Hayward is not going to get off of his blocks, and he's not going to have much 
going to affect in the run game. And the reason being is you go to his stats and you look at his block shedding, it's only 55. And so being that it is a mathematical formula, it's just one minus the other. Is the block shedding higher or is the offensive player's run blocking higher? That means that this guy's going to get beat against guys like that in the run game. However, if you look at Desmond King, who is a very good corner, uh, arguably just as good, if not better, his block shedding stat is 61, which puts him above uh, Keenan Allen, and he has 72 strength, so he poses a, a pretty good threat to stuff the run if it's coming outside in his direction. So I want you guys to, to at least keep that in mind, that some of the corners in the game are very weak, and they're not going to have a very good opportunity to actually do anything against the run because their stats are so low. And we can even go through and look at some of the top corners in the game, and I'll be able to show you guys some of what I'm talking about. So if we sort by the NFL here we go to these quarterbacks, there are a lot of them that are extremely weak. I, you talk about guys like Darius Slay, Chris Harris, you know, low uh, 60s to, to 50s strength. These guys are, don't get me wrong, very good cover corners, but they're lacking in an aspect of their game because their, their, their strength ratings are very, very low. And then you'll go ahead and go over to their block shedding rating, and they're very low as well. The top corner in the game, which is kind of amazing, and, and even you have to understand this is a guy that is totally underrated in his run stuffing aspect of his game. Jalen Ramsey is very good against the run, but Madden only gives him 50 block shedding. So as you can see, if he's shadowing my best receiver all game long, if he's going up against Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen's going to win that matchup against him because Keenan Allen has 59 blocking, whereas Jalen Ramsey only has 50 block shed. And you go down this list of top corners, and there's nobody here until you get all the way down here to Chris Harris Jr. that's actually going to be able to block shed against my wide receiver. The only ones that would have a chance would be like Darius Slay, Chris Harris that have slightly higher block shed, and then you have to continue to go down until you find more guys that can do that. And so those are guys that you're going to want to start to lean towards is guys that can actually be uh, combative in the run game and help you guys out. Now, I do want to get into the coverage stats because arguably the coverage stats are the more important stats for corners. And I'm not going to argue, I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not going to argue against that because it, it, it's correct. I mean, that is what it is. And so the first thing that you want to understand in terms of coverage is that athletic ability means everything. And what I mean by that is it's the same with every position. You can't teach your players athletic ability, no matter how much you train them, no matter what you do, aside from going in and physically editing the players, you're never going to be able to teach them any specific physical attribute. Their speed's not going to go up, their acceleration, agility, any of that's not going to go up. And so you have to first and foremost be aware of the athletic traits needed to play corner in Madden. The first thing that you want to realize is that most wide receivers are going to be in that 89 to 90 speed range. And if you have significantly lower speed than that, you're not going to be able to keep up and be able to cover in man-to-man -man coverage. So that's not necessarily the worst thing. Guys like Desmond King have 88 speed. He can keep up in the man-to-man -man coverage game, but he's more suited to be a zone coverage type of guy or a press corner type of guy where he's not asked to cover in man coverage for a long period of time because he's not very fast to keep up with it. He's going to end up getting burnt if he's asked to cover a long slant all the way across the middle in man coverage or something like that. That's just the way that it is. So you have to keep in mind that speed threshold. When you're looking for corners, you're ideally looking for 90 speed. That's what you're looking for. And then in addition to that, you're going to be looking for a minimum of 90 acceleration. The one thing that a lot of people overlook is the acceleration rating. And what the acceleration rating affects is how quickly a player can break on the ball. And a lot of people don't realize when you're playing the game and you see a corner teleport, quote unquote teleport in game. What that is, is that's a guy that has a superior acceleration rating that is able to accelerate to the ball and break on the ball whenever he recognizes where the ball is going. And so the higher acceleration rating a corner has, the more likely they're going to be able to break to a ball and get to it once they actually recognize where that ball is going. That's really important. If we go to, I believe Jalen Ramsey has a 
super high acceleration rating. Yeah, if you go to uh, Jalen Ramsey, he has 95 acceleration, which means that when he breaks on the ball, he's going to get to the ball a whole hell of a lot faster than a player like Trey Herndon or DJ Hayden. And so you have to really focus on those speed and acceleration stats if you want a player to actually be able to make plays. So that's that's you know the physical traits aspect number one. Now the next aspect of it is the agility. What this is going to do is this is going to determine how well a corner changes direction. And this one's very straightforward. In order to cover on defense, you're going to have to be able to cover, break in, break out, you know, curl routes, and, and they're going to you're going to have to be able to break on the ball and break on routes and stuff like that and change your direction. And if you have a low agility rating, like Michael Davis here, they're going to struggle to get moving in another direction. They might do good in man-to-man coverage, you know, for five to ten yards, but then once the route changes, they're not going to be able to jump onto that route and cover it as well because they're not agile enough to change directions. That's what this stat affects. And so if you get a guy that has pretty consistent stats across the board like this, like Casey Hayward, that has basically 90 speed, 90 acceleration, and 90 agility, you know that he's going to be able to keep up with the offense, he's going to be able to break on the ball pretty quickly, and he's going to be able to change directions while he is covering a play. But that's really important. The next stat, the physical stat that matters, is going to be your strength rating. Your strength rating is going to completely determine whether or not you're going to be able to beat uh, a wide receiver out whenever you're trying to like bat a ball out of his hands or if you're in press coverage. That's going to determine a lot of that. The stronger the player, the easier they're going to be able to perform press coverage. And so as you can see, guys like Casey Hayward and Desmond King are built to be press corners and they're pretty successful at it because they're big guys, uh, both close to six foot tall almost 200 pounds for both of them they have very good strength basically 70 for both of them and then 90 and 81 press coverage so they're built to be press type corners and they'll be successful at it because they have that strength rating guys with lower strength rating like trevor williams aren't going to be as successful at press coverage they're going to be more suited to running in the open field and changing directions then we get on to uh the two stats that are not physical stats that affect how well you do your job. Awareness, as in any position, is going to affect how well you do your job. But don't allow awareness to overshadow everything. Don't allow awareness to overinflate a player's rating. What you'll see with a lot of players is they'll have a high awareness rating but low coverage ratings. Well, the coverage ratings matter more in this game because what's going to happen is sure they'll be aware of what the play is but that doesn't mean they'll actually be able to cover the player that they're supposed to cover you know just because they recognize oh yeah it's a pass and this guy's going this direction doesn't mean that he's actually going to be able to perform the coverage necessary to cover that player and so that's why man coverage and zone coverage are more important whichever scheme you're trying to do you're going to want the man, man coverage and zone coverage stats to kind of be your focus once you've found players that have the correct physical attributes the one thing that i would say matters more uh more so than awareness is going to be your play recognition your play recognition is going to dep- is going to change how quickly the player recognizes where the play is going in terms of you know is it a pass is it a run is it a run left is it a run right is it a deep pass a short pass this is going to change how well a player reacts to that and so desmond king actually plays a little bit better in that regard than casey hayward does because he's got that 94 play rec which means that he recognizes from the start of the play This is what the play is, and this is what my assignment is. And then because he has his good coverage stats, he's able to go and perform those duties. And so that's how those things intertwine. Press coverage is all obviously how well you press up against them at the line of scrimmage. When you call press coverage, you're going to be, you know, trying to basically hold them at the line of scrimmage and block them from performing the route. What that helps you do is that helps you get pressure on the quarterback. The longer you can prevent the receivers from getting out on the routes, the more time you buy for your pass rushers to get in and get pressure on the quarterback and hopefully get a sack. Now, a couple other stats that matter for corners are going to be their catching stats. You're going to want to look at their combination of catching, catching traffic, and spectacular catch. What I've started to notice a lot is that I get a lot of opportunities where my corners have 
a chance at an interception, but they drop it. Now, that can be affected by the sliders if you turn up the sliders for interceptions, but it's also affected by the fact that a lot of corners just don't have good catching ratings. And so you see the difference between guys like Casey Hayward Jr. and Desmond King that have pretty good ca catching ratings, 78 and 76 respectively. But that's not even close to what most receivers have. Most receivers are 80 to mid-80 catching rating, and so these guys are going to drop balls more often than a receiver would. Then you start to get into guys like Trevor Williams, who have 67 catching. Well, imagine if you had a wide receiver that had 67 catching. They're going to drop a ton of balls. They're not going to catch anything that comes their way. And so I've been kind of expecting Trevor Williams to pick off a lot of balls that he drops, and I get frustrated with it, but then I have to go back and realize that he's just not that type of player. He's not going to catch balls that come Come to him even if they're right in his hands because he can't he's just physically not able to in the game he's more just a coverage guy and try and bat the ball down type of corner and so if you want guys that are going to pick the ball off you're going to be looking for guys that have 80 or better catching that's really really important and the other stats that matter quite a bit that are kind of not focused on for catching is the catch in traffic rating. Most of the time for a corner, if you're getting an interception, you're going to be catching it in traffic with other players around you. And so the catch in traffic rating, the higher it can be, the better for you. And then spec catch matters quite a bit too, because that depends on whether corners can go up and make crazy catches over top of receivers whenever the ball is placed into a bad spot or something like that. And that's just going to be guys like Patrick Peterson or Jalen Ramsey that are just going to be able to go up and make crazy catches that are going to get you crazy turnovers. So if that's what you're looking for, make sure you focus on those three catching stats and not just the catching stat by itself, because those are going to tell you a whole story about what the, ca the player is capable of. Some players have really good catching, but they have bad catch in traffic and bad uh, spec catch. And what that means is that they'll catch a ball if it's thrown right to them. Sure, no problem. But they're not going to catch it if there's players around them, and they're not going to go up and make a crazy interception to get you a turnover. And so those are, are, are some pretty important things that factor into it. And then we had already talked about uh, stats like tackling and, and block shed and stuff like that. And the next most important stat that we need to talk about, and I believe it's the last important stat that we need to talk about, is the jumping stat. The jumping stat is going to determine whether this player is going to be able to get up and and defend a, a high pass or a jump ball. And uh, more often than not, you might see it in my, my Chargers videos, I struggle to actually go up and defend passes against you know tall receivers or highly thrown balls because my corners just don't have good jumping stats. You want this to be around 90 or better because that's going to mean that you're going to be in the same category as receivers. Right now, these guys are like 86, 83, and 87. That's just not good enough to get up and defend passes very high. And so you have to live with the fact that the guys are going to come down with the ball and you got to try and punch it out on the way down. That's basically the only chance that you have. And so these guys also don't have a very good chance of going up and making some type of spectacular catch because they just can't jump up that high and get to it. So you want to focus on those physical stats first. Like I said, they're really important and they're going to affect everything about what you do. You know, if you are trying to play a lot of man coverage, but you're bringing in guys that have 87 speed, you're not going to be able to do it. And you're going to be wondering, oh, well, why aren't my guys covering? This guy's a 90 overall, but he's got 87 speed. That's why he can't cover because he's just not fast enough to keep up or he doesn't have the jumping to cut to cover those deep balls that you're expecting him to cover and stuff like that. And so that's what's really important for for corners in this game. Don't forget to kind of look at the run game and evaluate whether you are struggling against outside runs, because if you are, you need to maybe think about your corners and think about, oh, well, maybe I need some guys that can actually play the run out there and get off blocks. The last stat that matters that I do want to talk about in addition is stamina. A lot of people don't really think about it, but there are quite a few corners that don't have very good stamina. The problem with that is you're not really going to want your top end corners to sub off in the middle of a game. Now, if you're trying to run a budget lineup where you have a lot of corners that are like Michael Davis's overall, like around a 72 or whatever, then yeah, it doesn't really matter what their stamina is because you can just turn up the auto subs and have them sub out whenever. But if you have top corners like I have in Casey Hayward, Desmond King, and Trevor Williams, I want them to be on the field 90% of the time. And so that stamina bar matters. It, and it matters quite a bit because if these guys have to get subbed off, 
my god am I in trouble if I have to rely on Michael Davis and then a backup safety as my fifth corner. I mean, that's just not good news. And, and that's not going to be good news for anybody. There are very few teams that have five really good corners. I mean, you're just not going to be able to do it. You're going to be able to find budget players to fill these roles. Like, Michael Davis is a very good budget player to fill that fifth or that fourth corner spot, and he can sub in from occasion. But there is definitely a difference between guys like him and guys like Trevor Williams or Desmond King. I mean, you look at some of their stats, and, like, you know, I'm relying on guys that have 92, 95 agility, so they're very good at changing direction and covering passes. But then Michael Davis is 85, so he's just simply not going to be as good in coverage because he doesn't have the physical ability to do so. And so you guys are going to want to focus on guys that are more athletically capable. If you guys want to see a video uh, where I show you guys some of the skills and some of the hidden gems in the roster, I can definitely do that. I have a couple of them on my roster and on my practice squad. Um, uh Obi Malafonwu is one of them. He's got very good speed and acceleration, but again, he doesn't have very good agility. He's more suited to playing safety because he can't change directions very well. I believe if I go to my practice squad, though, you'll find a couple guys that are more suited uh, to playing corner. No, I don't have them on here, actually. If we go to free agency, I know that there are a couple there. So if we go to free agency and you look at corners, you can find some really good budget guys down here, kind of in the depth of, of the corner realm. And so if you go to guys like Keon Crossan, for example, he's got very good physical attributes that you can build on and make this guy into a good corner. You know, 95 speed, 92 agility, 91 acceleration. That's a guy that you can rely upon. Uh, you know that he's going to physically be able to keep up. You just have to focus on developing his coverage stats in order to supplement that. So... Like I said, the number one thing is focusing on their physical attributes and knowing that they need to have like 90 plus in all those categories to really be considered a good corner and be able to keep up. Um, that's really important. That's number one. And then I also don't want you guys to over overlook the fact that the corners this year actually have quite a bit of an effect in the run game. If you're struggling in the run game, it's probably because you guys aren't getting off blocks. And the corners are one of those positions that people overlook and don't realize they need to get off blocks. And their, their stats can actually matter quite a bit in whether they get off set, uh, blocks or not. So hopefully this video helped you guys out and, and showed you guys some some ideas of what actually you know you can do with your corners and, and what matters in terms of their stats to get them to play better you don't need crazy high overall players i would certainly play a game with you know any one of these guys here um i could sign maybe jalen maverick for, or jalen myrick for example and keon cross and, and play them as my number one and number two corners and i would have no reservations about that because i know they're physically capable of keeping up with anybody they both have 95 speed and really good acceleration i know that they can keep up with whoever they're trying to cover it's just they're going to be less consistent in their coverage because they probably have pretty poor man and zone coverage ratings and so um that's what you guys want to keep in mind if you guys uh, did get anything out of this video leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more and comment as always any feedback you have if you guys want to see those hidden gem videos like I made last year on Madden, I made a couple of them. I'd be more than happy to show you guys, you know, players on the the base Madden roster or whatever the updated Madden roster is that have really good stats that you could utilize for your team that you can get on a really um, discounted budget. I'd be more than happy to do that. So I'll see you guys in the next one, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. See ya.